Welcome to a special episode of The Vantage Point. If you're a native of Southern Appalachia or the South in general, you have no doubt heard from relatives about your ethnic heritage. Before we get into that topic though, it's important to keep in mind that we learn ethnicity. We don't inherit it. When we look at the results of genetic DNA tests, they're often framed in terms like ethnic origins. That's because our DNA is compared to various other groups that live in other ethnic or cultural regions around the world. This can get confusing when the names of countries are attached to ethnicities. On the other hand, biological differences are inherited and are clearly detected in today's top-of-the-line DNA tests. Because there are historically significant genetic parallels to cultural groups of the past, DNA results are often framed in terms of what we think of as countries or ethnicities. Because of recent immigration, though, into developed countries in Europe, for example, test results don't always reflect the genetic backgrounds of some of the members of today's nationalities or societies in those countries. To keep things simple, I will use ethnicity to reflect those historical and genetic cultural parallels. At any rate, you have no doubt heard from earnest relatives that they don't know where their ancestors originated, but their great-grandmother was a Cherokee. As I've noted a number of times on the show, uh, I have heard the same kind of comments from folks on my mom's and dad's sides of the family. With these thoughts in mind, I was able to study the DNA test results of 52 people who, who may live in different parts of the world or country, but they share one thing in common. They had ancestors who lived in the southern Appalachia in the middle to late 1800s. Because I don't know these people personally and have not been given their permission to use their names, I'll keep them anonymous for the time being. Well, probably forever. I was particularly interested in looking for native ancestry as well as Scots-Irish roots because they're the most often mentioned by viewers of the channel. What I found was fascinating and requires some historical knowledge to unpack, so stick around to see the results and my analysis. I hope you'll join me. Here's what I found. I began the study with 21 suspected ethnicities. No one reported results from South Asia, Eastern Europe, or native ancestry from the Southern Hemisphere. That left us with 18 ethnicities to consider. Two participants reported 48% Italian, respectively, so that portion of their genetic makeup came from recent intermarriages and don't reflect historical patterns in the region. I'll talk about that some more in just a minute. The same can be said for one person who reported 7% East Asian ancestry. As you can see, one person had a test result that showed 1% Jewish. The same could be said of North African ancestry. Three of the test results of the 52 participants reported 1 to 3% Iberian, that's Spanish or Portuguese ancestry. There's no historical precedence for the presence of Iberian genes in the region. Keep in mind though, a lot of people think that Melungeon folk have Spanish or Portuguese uh, or Turkish ancestry, but they don't. They are they're very much Western Europeans and, and Sub-Saharan Africans. Anyway, it's been uh, four generations or more since the ancestors of this sample were alive in Southern Appalachia. Now here's where we get some surprising results. Only three participants, or slightly more than 5%, reported Native American ancestry, that's North American ancestry. One result reported 10% and the other two reported 1% each. These data tell me that there is a, only a 5% chance that a person from the region has sufficient enough native DNA to register on the test. Keep in mind that if an ethnicity doesn't show in a DNA test, the biological traits are not likely to be seen in the physical appearance of the persons that you're looking at. It is possible that what might be seen as Native American traits came from other groups. Of the four people who reported Italian ancestry, two participants, as I mentioned uh, earlier, were at 48% Italian, so their Italian ancestry didn't come from the region. The other two had 1% each. Of the five participants who registered Central European and Finnish DNA, one had 5% while the other four had 1% each. These results could have come from the region's historic population, but if they did, like the Italians, they were not common. After studying history for 50 years, I was not surprised to learn that 13% or 7 out of 52 of the participants had test results that showed small amounts of sub-Saharan 
DNA, like the folks in Hancock County. Their African percentages range from 1 to 2 percent. This tells us that one person out of eight white folks who have roots in southern Appalachia has measurable African DNA. Let's now move to the more common ancestral origins of the folks in our sample. Dutch ancestry is found among 25% of the participants. Their percentage, Dutch, ranges from 2% to 11%. This is a, a tough ethnicity to separate out from German and Anglo-Saxons who make up a significant portion of the historic populations of eastern and northern England as well as south central and southeastern Scotland. Next, we take a major leap forward with those who have Welsh ancestry. Some 31 or 60% of the sample showed Welsh ancestry. Their Welsh DNA percentage ranged from 1% to 10%. This is a fairly large number when one considers that Wales had only 587,000 people at the beginning of the 18th century, or 1800s. That would be the 19th century. The blood of the Vikings is well represented among folks in the sample. Some 39 or 75 percent of the participants had Danish, Norse, or Swedish ancestry. Of the 39, 1 to 10 percent of their DNA came from Scandinavia. There was one outlier that boasted 38 percent, but that percentage probably resulted from more recent external to the region marriages. Moving up the chart, Irish DNA was found in 42 or 80.7 percent of the participants. Their DNA percentages ranged from 1 percent to 25 percent. As with the Scandinavian data, there was one outlier that produced a result of 44%. That figure seems a bit large for the regional pattern, though. As you know from watching our surname series, many German folks entered the region from Pennsylvania. There's a 90% chance that a person from the region has Germanic DNA. As I mentioned earlier, it's hard to separate out Anglo-Saxon and Dutch DNA from German. Nonetheless, two to 39% of the participants DNA was classified as German. The average German percentage for all 52 participants was nearly 14%. I was a bit surprised by this result. I fully expected the Irish to sit at number three, not number four. We now move to the top two ethnicities in Southern Appalachia, Scottish and English. In both cases, every participant tested positive for these ethnicities. 22% of their DNA was of Scottish origin. As a comparison, mine is 50%. English DNA makes up 45.8% of the sample's ethnic heritage, but mine sits at 11%, which is near the low end of the range found in the study. Keep in mind, these are, these are means or averages, so there are ranges in there. In reflecting over the two curiosities that I posed at the beginning, I think native ancestry is perhaps distorted in many family traditions which were aimed at either masking African ancestry or they simply had faulty assumptions about physical traits that are also found among Welsh, Irish, and other European groups. Dark skin and high cheekbones folks are not exclusive to Native Americans. The Scots-Irish is something of a nebulous community because the group formed in Ulster, that's the nine counties of Northern Ireland, during the plantation era of the Stuart dynasty in the 1600s. It was essentially a Protestant community in Northern Ireland made up primarily of Ulster Scots and Anglo-Ulster settlers. Now, because there was some uh, religious toleration there for Protestants, there were likely some French, Welsh, and perhaps even some <laughs> native Irish who really weren't staunch Catholics who mixed in for good measure. Border and Lowland Scots had among their ancestors the same Anglo people who likewise settled in the north of England. So it's hard to separate them from one another, but DNA testing is making inroads into identifying Highland and Central Scottish DNA from the border region. Nonetheless, DNA results show several ways that a person from Southern Appalachia and the South could reasonably embrace a Scots-Irish or Ulster ancestry. The first thing is, you've got to have Scottish ancestry, and every one of the participants had that. At the end of the day, I think that these results are consistent with the origin and meanings of the antebellum surnames found in the region. Now, we've talked a lot about those, about a little over a thousand so far on the show. There are a couple of caveats that I want to throw out for you to consider or think about. Many Germanic, French, and even Gaelic surnames were anglicized to fit into Anglo-dominated society. Second, antebellum surnames, because they're so old, may not reflect their ethnic origins. 
Let me know if you'd like to see a video on that kind of analysis. Well, folks, that's about all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this short journey into our genetic and ethnic past. Until I see you again, may the good Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and give you peace. Bye-bye.